Happy New Year everybody in the fighting game community. My name is James Chen, aka Jay Chenzor, and welcome to It Was Tuesday, a podcast about all things fighting games. I'm kind of off-center, I just realized right now. There we go. <laughs> a little better. There we go. Uh, uh, so, uh, obviously, for those of you who are very, very familiar with the uh, Tuesday show and such, the first episode of the year has almost always been the Ultra Chen TV Awards, uh, in which I talk about the past year of 2023, and I talk about what's been going on there, and I give out awards for all sorts of different categories. Uh, I am postponing that until next week uh, for two reasons. One, I just felt like that this was a relevant topic to talk about right now, and something important going into uh, the FGC for 2024. But also because I just wanted to give myself a little more time to think about my awards categories and prizes and such. Uh, needed an extra week because uh, I have not had a chance to really uh, sit down and try to suss out all of my and, and select all my awards <laughs> for the past year uh, yet. So I'm going to spend some time. Um, I'm going to spend some time. Uh, this week uh, to really, really make sure that I uh, I am happy with those choices. So uh, get ready for a bunch of uh, awards next week. Uh, that's going to be stuff like newcomer of the year or fighting game of the year and you know storyline of the year, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you know those are things that we're going to talk about, including like worst of the year and such. But 2024 uh, is a new year for the fighting game community. Off to a rousing start already. Already kind of feel like I need to. <laughs> I I just need to go and like crawl into a hole and just ignore everything right now. Uh, but obviously, a lot of drama being brought up recently uh, on the social media verse already. And like I said, this is January 2nd, so we're off to a rousing start here. Um, basically, uh, conversation uh, about you know toxicity in the fighting game community. Uh, there was a tweet that uh, someone, a, a user, uh, put out. Not gonna mention the name because I just don't. This is not an expose or anything. Like I can't believe this person tweeted this kind of thing. But the tweet was just an example of the FGC being uh, particularly toxic, uh, and so you know that kind of started making the rounds. I've seen uh, people talk about them, you know, talk about this, and so I decided to tweet about it. And it really, really uh, started to spread all over the place. I'm never really sure if it's my tweet that, that gets in particular, like, spread around. Because I only see it from my view. I don't know if everybody else kind of sees it. But, boy, it started bringing out all sorts of uh, topic and discussion. And also a lot of, like, uh, angry people. <laughs> <laughs> angry people uh, honestly but uh, basically uh, the tweet you know was implying that the FGC was very toxic and my tweet was uh, I mean I can read my own tweet I think that's safe to do because that's obviously not you know trying to expose anybody or, or I'm sorry expose anybody uh, but basically, my tweets uh, were to the effect of, you know, the, uh, you know, the example of someone basically, say, you know, basically saying the FGC is claiming to be welcoming, and then uh, an example of FGC, like someone in the FGC basically talking trash to some beginner, like you suck at fighting games, go home, blah 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 blah, you know, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And so my response uh, with the quote tweet was, you know, has this happened? Of course, you can't escape awful people in any community, but to use examples to paint the entire scene is disingenuous, especially when there are so many more examples of the opposite of the FGC being kind and wonderful. Uh, and then follow-up tweets, the amount of good the FGC does for pros and for casuals and for newbies is immeasurable. But as with standard social media, that stuff isn't viral, so we rarely see it highlighted. 
But it happens all the time. People being great to each other in the FGC. It's so common. And then uh, I also said it only takes a few awful people to make it seem worse than it is. These people are outliers. But it only takes one to affect your experience. I get that it stands out, but the scene is so wonderful overall. I truly believe that. The FGC opens doors and I'm so grateful to be here. And so, yeah, so this actually brought out the armada of replies. Some people saying, you know, yes, the FGC has been wonderful for me. Thank you for being the voice of reason. And a lot of other people really who started bringing up stories of just how they've had awful experiences. And, you know, a lot of people are very adamant about the fact that the FGC is particularly bad, like worse than most communities. Now, it's really interesting, um, you know, uh, from a lot of standpoints, right, there have been, you know, people who are in other communities, like, for example, the Call of Duty communities or, you know, League of Legends communities, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, that, you know, come by and are like, oh, man, I used to be part of those scenes, like the fighting game community is nothing compared to the level of toxicity on those scenes, like, oh, my God, you know, kind of things like that. But at the same time, you know, there have been a lot of examples of people who are like, you know, I was in this Facebook group and I asked for, you know, uh, help and everything. And eventually people started calling me a scrub because, you know, I I was having trouble and I was a beginner, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and, you know, there are definitely examples of people out there, uh, you know, being complete assholes to other people for basically no reason other than just, you know, uh, you're in a competitive game and when you're in a competitive environment, it tends to make you competitive in multiple ways, right? Like, again, you know, a lot of people have said, oh, James, your experience is just different because you're known in the community and, you know, Dude, <laughs> being known in the community does not shield you from toxicity. Also, it actually kind of adds to the toxicity because it's kind of stuff that I've had to endure. But even then, you know, just recently, for example, when Street Fighter VI first came out and I really kind of didn't know uh, what I was doing, you know, I was sitting there playing in Battle Hub. Someone beats me and then in the chat was just like, you're so scrubby, like, I'm not even good and I kicked your ass. How are you, Diamond Rank, blah, blah, blah. You suck. And like, this guy just went completely off uh, in the Battle Hub chat for absolutely no reason whatsoever. Now, obviously, I've been in the scene long enough that I just see something like that and I laugh and I'm just like, whatever, dude. You know, uh, you know, uh, get off on yourself, whatever, you know, have fun, etc., uh, etc. Et but that's just like uh, not something that a lot of people are used to because competition is not people. A lot of people are not built for this. Right. They aren't built for this. And like uh, Factory Worker One says in the chat, you know, every competitive game is like that. Uh, yeah. And World of Warcraft started to implode after Solo Shuffle got introduced. Yeah. I mean, like you see something like competitive Tetris, like CTWC. Shout outs to Blue Scooty, by the way, who has become the first person on the planet to actually beat NES Tetris. 13-year-old kid who got fourth place at CTWC last year literally played uh, NES Tetris to the point that the game crashed. <laughs> like, he literally played the game until it crashed. So he's the first person on the planet to have ever beaten NES Tetris. Shout-outs to him, by the way. But, you know, NES Tetris is a, is a different scene, right? You're not fighting against someone directly. You guys are just competing to see who gets a higher score. So no one is directly trying to beat up the other person. And so it doesn't necessarily promote that kind of uh, vibe, you know, that a lot of competitive games do. I mean, you know, you look at professional sports, right? And like the amount of trash talking that goes on, you know, you, you think about like blacktop basketball and the amount of shit talking that goes on there, even in actual sports. I mean, like you hear stories about players like Larry Bird, who is just like the most legendary trash talker in the world. Gary Payton's nickname was The Mouth, you know, because he just wouldn't stop talking. Uh, 
blah and trash talking everybody, et cetera, et cetera. And so, you know, a lot of people in the chat, like Mike Lee saying, you cannot control how individuals will act in any community. What makes the FGC more welcoming is that as a whole, we do condemn when people act like that and call it out. Yeah, to be fair, so Emily uh, is a player, disabled player in the fighting game community, really loves the fighting game community, hasn't really delved into playing as much. And so she's very new. So Street Fighter VI is one of the first times she's really started to delve in there. She started to tweet about how she was proud that she got to like bronze with like three stars. And then someone like quote retweeted her and was just basically talking mad smack to her saying that she was horrible and whatever like that. But then like if you look at Emily's responses, like 99% of them were wonderful people being very supportive. And the guy who actually said the nasty things to her uh, got all sorts of very angry replies. And not only that, but someone in the threads even mentioned that that guy is known to be toxic and has already been banned from certain groups. It's just a lot of people didn't know who, who that person was until just then, right? So, uh, but I mean, again, you know, there just seems to be this reputation that the FGC has more toxicity than a lot of other communities. And, you know, I got to wonder what it is that causes that. And, you know, for me, putting out of these tweets that that's not the case. Am I wrong, though? If this is so many people and this seems to be what everything happens and, you know, people always talk about, oh, you know, I see the latest drama from the fighting game community and I always see drama on the fighting game community and not as much on anything else when I'm on social media. And I'm part of many, many groups, you know, like, etc., cetera, et cetera. Uh, You know, is it really we're in a situation where the FGC is worse and, and, and bad, you know, and I, and I started thinking about this. And again, you know, I, I, I try to think about these things from different points of view, right? I mean, I have lots of people who always come to me to talk to me about like horrible things that are going on in the FGC, you know, and I, I don't know, like, I'm not sure why, but I, I mean, I guess it's because I'm so vocal about it and I talk about these things a lot. But a lot of people do expect me to, you know, be a problem solver. Like I can be someone who, you know, highlights this for them, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, one of the difficult things about that is that, you know, I usually will not act on one side of the story and I have to try to get, you know, information from every side and really kind of, you know, base it off of good research and stuff. So I try not to... Uh, you know, just repeat some things that people say right away, which I have done in the past uh, to a fault. So I'm trying not to do that these days. Um, but uh, the thing about it is, yeah, I mean, a lot of people in the ch chat are saying things like, you know, it's human nature to focus hard on the negative experiences and just ignore all the good ones. You know, uh, I think impact of 1v1 toxicity is just bigger and more personal as a team facing a toxic situation kind of dissolves between a group. Uh, FGC worse than other game communities. I don't want to die laughing, please. You know, these are the things that people are saying in the chat, you know, and and, and here's the thing, right? Like. Here's the thing, uh, yeah, see, <laughs> now another person coming in here talking about how League of Legends or Dota 2 are, like, by far worse, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the difference, I think, that really kind of comes through for the FGC, what makes it so that it feels more toxic? Yes, the 1v1 nature is really bad, and I'm going to be that guy again who says that you know, the arcade culture helped a lot. Now, when you were by yourself in an arcade and someone talked shit to you, you felt bad and you never went to the arcade again. So obviously it was awful. Uh, but, you know, in a lot of situations in bigger environments, you know, you had friends, you had people to talk to. And, you know, a lot of times you did expect to see people to show up again in the future. And so you would... You, I mean, it's just like you don't talk smack to people right. It's the internet. It's the it's the penny arcade, uh, greater greater uh, dickwad theory. Uh, you know the greater I forgot what it was called. Uh, the greater internet. Oh, it was the greater internet fuckwad theory basically, uh, where someone gets on the internet and all of a sudden uh, 
just really, really bad, right? I, I mean, look, someone says Daigo got punched in the face. He went back. I got, I've been accosted before. I've actually been struck by somebody at uh, a 7-Eleven. Actually struck me for uh, beating them. Uh, my friend had a gun pulled on him for, for having a win streak in Mortal Kombat. You know, like, I, you know, obviously, like, these things happen for sure. And, and there is a lot of awfulness out there. And the 1v1 aspect hurts a lot. Uh, one of the things, uh, one of the, th <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Thank you, Necromancy, for posting the, uh, full, uh, the, the Penny Arcade meme. Uh, but here's the thing. I think one of the things that actually makes fighting games in particularly tough is that, you know, we live on Twitter. And if Twitter is anything, is any indication, Twitter is where people go to vent, right? This is just where they go to vent. Because, you know, you used to yell into the ether, and now you actually have a place to yell. And if you're big enough, you have an audience that will actually listen to you. Um, and so, because the FTC lives on Twitter, it happens a lot more and a lot of people playing do not have the ability, you know, they don't have their friend groups. They don't have the people that they talk to that they can, uh, that they can vent from. So for example, uh, when I used to play Teppin all the time, I tweeted every night, you know, how angry that game was making me because I just needed a place to vent, you know? And it was tough. When I started first playing Street Fighter Duel, uh, when that came out, I was having trouble in that game and I didn't understand. But I had one person, shout outs to him by the way, in my DMs that I would talk to about Street Fighter Duel. And so basically I would just sit there and rant and rave and vent to him and it never made it to Twitter. <laughs> Nobody probably even knows that I play Street Fighter Duel all this much, right? So I had an outlet. I had a means by, you know, getting that frustration out there. Case in point, back in the days when we were on the Shoryuken.com forums, it was a lot more organized back then. Yes, were there jerks on the forums? Of course there were jerks. Do people have bad experiences on the forums? Of course people had bad experiences on the forums. But it was definitely a lot more regulated. And you definitely had ways to shout into the ether. And the nice thing about it, so the problem with Twitter is that if one person shouts into the ether, I only saw the tweet because somebody else quote retweeted it. And they probably only saw it because someone else, quote, retweeted it, et cetera, et cetera. So it, it, it spreads that way, right? And I, and I really do feel like, you know, most of the people who talk about the toxicity of the FGC really comes from things like, like Twitter, right? Twitter is like literally the worst. Everybody says when they go to offline, it's a lot better, you know. And, you know, obviously the Twitter is part of the community, so you can't just say, you can't count Twitter. I mean, it's there, right? But I mean, again, you know, one of the reasons why, you know, I never look at what Punk does on Twitter as badly as a lot of everybody else is because a lot of times when he tweets, that's just his version of, of, of my Teppin tweets. He's just frustrated and, you know, he's an emotional guy and it happens. And yes, he takes it too far sometimes. Absolutely, he takes it too far. And, uh, you know, it, it's just one of those things that we have to learn and keep talking to people about and, you know, trying our best to make sure we educate people to stop doing that, especially a lot more of the prominent people. So again, like, I don't know if we're necessarily more toxic than everyone else, but it's just more public. It's more out there and it's more viewable. But, but let's be honest here. There are a lot of awful things that are happening, you know, in the fighting game community that a lot of people don't know about, right? I mean, I get I get messages from people talking about drama and, you know, things that like are going on with them. Every time I say the fighting game community is great, I'll have people come up to me and be like, "How is it so great? This happened to me." 
And it's this really awful situation. And again, it's a tough situation because I, I can't do anything about it. Like, I don't, how am I going to make a judgment myself, right? Like, I have to hear the sides of every story. I have to, uh, I have to hear, um, you know, I need to talk. I need to find out more information. I can't just go on what somebody tells me and says, hey, this community is toxic, right? This community is toxic. This is what they did to me. James, do something about it. <laughs> like, <laughs> what, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> right? And, and that's the thing. And, and and I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do about it. Uh, yeah, and see, some people are saying in the chat here, you know, FGC is the most toxic community I've been in. A lot of entitled, you know, uh, might have hit return a little too early, but a lot of entitled people. And yeah, so this is the thing, right? So we have to, you know, actually address this, right? This, this is something that we have to talk about, like what creates this... Uh, perception right and, and again you know that it's a most toxic community i've been in there probably are more toxic communities out there um <laughs> one person says i came to the fgc to get away from toxicity um but here's the thing right uh so what was i saying so you know um you know saying that this is the most toxic community but the fact that other communities are toxic does that make it okay that are more toxic than the FGC? Does that make it okay when the FGC is toxic? Not really, right? And yeah, like Necromancy Black says, it also depends on what people consider toxic as well. Like I said, I've been around this long enough that a lot of times, like when Twitch chat's telling me that I suck, I get that a lot in messages when I'm sitting there playing. Some guy will just randomly come on and be like, oh, you suck, you know, kind of thing like that. And like, you know, uh, that happens. And these days, you know, I, I, it used to bother me. So I totally get it. But, uh, you know, obviously I've gotten to a point right now where these things just don't, uh, don't really affect me anymore. Um, but again, like, just because we're not as bad, if we can say, dude, other communities are worse, does that mean that we should stop? Because like I said, there's awful stories going, I mean, one person literally on that tweet, you know, came in and just started going at me. And talking to me about how, you know, like this horrible thing happened to him and it's really awful and that these really well-known people are being horrible and all this stuff. And, I, you know, I don't know how to respond to this kind of thing. I, like, I, what can I do about it, right? And honestly, another interesting thing about this, you know, speaking as like people are telling me that my experience has been much better because I'm a known entity and just talking about how being a known entity kind of makes it worse sometimes. You know, uh, every time I do speak out a lot of, on a lot of these situations, you instantly get attacked. People try to drag you down as well. My Twitter's been canceled before. My Twitter's literally been banned uh, at one point in time because uh, people were coming after me for speaking off, speaking out about a certain situation, you know? Um, so it's, 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 it's a really interesting situation, but what I do want to talk about is how do we, how do we fix this, right? Uh, again, you know, I, I hate the fact that some people find this community to be so toxic and it's not fair for me to say, oh, well, my experiences have been fine, which they technically haven't been but it, still it's like you can't just say oh well i've never experienced anything wrong so obviously everything is great right like is that the the real way to talk about oh my gosh mike what's going on <laughs> uh, what's going on Yeah, and so seriously, there, there is there is something to be said about that as well. Uh, but um, yeah, I mean, our scene has been horrible to women. Uh, the trans players, uh, for sure, you know, and uh, ethnically, we've been very, very good. But obviously, from a gender standpoint, we have had a lot of you know, room to grow and a lot of uh, growth that we've had to have. So there's definitely been a lot of terrible things that have been going on. 
uh, again, you know, if the FGC can solve this problem, we need to run the world because, you know, this is a problem that extends far beyond the fighting game community. Um, you know, um, it goes far beyond the fighting game community, but at the same time, that doesn't mean we shouldn't try. Uh, sorry, I, I'm trying to remember the point that I was trying to get to. You know, oh yeah, there's obviously a lot of terrible things that are happening here. So we, we, what do we do to make it better? And again, it's a tough situation, right? Because we've had, you know, accusations of sexual harassment, some of which turned out to be true, some of which haven't turned out to be true. And, you know, so there's a lot of due diligence that has to be done. And one of the toughest things about the FGC is that we do not have a governing body. We do not have an overall governing body. Interestingly enough, what's, what's very much, uh, even if something like Dota or League are more toxic, they have a governing body because there's no such thing as the MOBA community. There's, there's no such thing as the MOBAC, the MOBA community. <laughs> uh, so... League of Legends can do whatever it wants, right? League of Legends can just ban whoever they want, come to whatever conclusion, and it all works. Uh, Dota can do that. Call of Duty can do that, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And um, you know, we can't do that as the fighting game community because we don't have a governing body. Right? You can't say Capcom Cup should be able to make the decisions. Capcom should be able to make the decisions because Capcom is only one part of the fighting game community. I mean, honestly, you know, when you count by number of games, Capcom is like barely, not even one-tenth of the fighting game community, right? Capcom is just a small fraction of it. There's so much else that's going on out there, uh, and we can't have one particular company be kind of the ruling class at that point. And so, you know, you ask yourself, well, when, what else can we do? Maybe Evo is the uh, governing body, but you know, how does that work exactly? And then the hardest thing about it is that we've tried this. If you guys even remember the fighting game code of conduct, the FGCOC that was attempted to be created by a bunch of, pe a bunch of people, that actually blew up. <laughs> That blew up, not in a good way. Like, it just failed. Like, a bunch of people started working on it, and then it just fell apart. Some of the uh, same way that, um, you know, similar ways to the Smash. You know, there was the Smash uh, group out there that were trying to basically be the governing body, and that blew up as well. Uh, it's, it's, it's tough. It's tough. And... Yeah, that's the thing. A lot of people are saying a lot of... I mean, there's a lot of people out there. We, we definitely don't know a lot <laughs> about everybody out there. I'm sorry, the chat is just going off in all these com, 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 you know different directions over here, talking about different regions, etc., etc. Et that's another thing, too. The only way to properly have a governing body is if it is international, if we include lots of people from different areas and such. Uh, so, you know, someone in the chat here says, FGC is awesome. I believe continuing to make FGC more welcoming to young players will benefit the community as a whole. And obviously, I try to do my best you guys have heard me countless times on this stream continue talking about how all the scenes should stop trashing each other's games and how we should all you know just learn to appreciate and watch other games even if we don't like playing them and every time i say that i almost kind of have to add the caveat like that's never gonna happen because human nature is human nature and yeah and that's the other thing right so um, is, a, is a governing body necessary? It's kind of nice that it's small pockets everywhere and not centralized behind one company or entity. Uh, that is actually one of my favorite things about the fighting game community is that we don't have any sort of ruling class that nobody out there kind of has that ability to say so. Like, I'm not talking about from, like, banning and from, obviously, toxicity kind of stands points, but, like, not having a governing body ensures that, you know, no particular game or no favoritism can occur, right? So, you know, you have people who will,
will promote some games over others and you don't have it so that anybody is actually sabotaging any particular community. Oh yeah, everyone calls for Capcom to do something first, clearly because they're the biggest, right? They're the biggest. And so Capcom is the one that's in the limelight. And so a lot of people want Capcom to be the first one to act because they feel like because Capcom is the largest one, they have the ability to affect that change. That if they do it, everybody will follow suit. And I don't think that that's Capcom's responsibility. I don't agree with that at all. I don't think that that's something Capcom should do. Like all the def all the different companies, right, exactly, that's the thing. Capcom Legal doesn't want that. Exactly, like as a company, like that is not something that you want to tackle, you know, uh, in, in that kind of situation. Uh, but you know, every scene, like I know when, like, I mean, think about this, when the Arturo Macharino thing happened and some people banned him and some people didn't ban him, a lot of people were mad at the groups that didn't ban Arturo. They're like, what are you doing? He stole money. Like, you know, like ban him. And they started yelling at them. And then when evidence started coming out that, you know, Arturo didn't steal money from Macharino, then all of a sudden, all the places that did ban him, everyone's like, what are you guys doing? Why haven't you unbanned him? What's wrong with you? And so, like, you know, this is, this is the toughest thing. You know, we have uh, inconsistency between that. And I don't think a government, uh, I don't think a government, uh, a governing body would help. Yeah, and granted... Afterwards, uh, our, the Arturo stuff went completely south, and it turned out he did steal money from people. Uh, so, yeah, uh, now he's disappeared. Uh, and I don't know, now nobody is really saying anything at this point. And this is just like, the whole scene is just in this weird situation. Like, I don't know, like, what the answer, who is the person who should come out and be like, this is what the FGC should do, right? Like, I, I, I don't know what the answer is, honestly. And, and that's one of the toughest things. Uh, yes, Arturo Sanchez. Yeah, uh-huh. That is the one, yes. That's why he's completely vanished uh, from the scene. Uh, all you have to do is uh, go look up anything about Dominion to try to get an idea of what's going on there. Uh, and yeah, exactly. Like Necromancy Black says, an actual governing body would make everyone mad because uh, he would maybe be suspended from duties by not... I mean, it gets really political. It just gets really political. And like I said, uh, if you go to Hagure's uh, Twitter, H-A-G-U-R-E, H-A-G-U-R-E, he was very heavily involved with the fighting game code of conduct and he will he's illuminated some stories that happened there that were problematic and and uh some issues actually uh happened uh with the in within the governing body that was in the fg uh coc and so yeah there's a lot of stuff that's happening so yeah this is the thing there's a lot of terrible things that have happened here I can't get wind of all of it because honestly, I'm a hermit and I don't talk to anybody. I know people think that I must be aware of everything that's going on all the time, but honestly, uh, as a super introvert, I actually don't talk to many people. I didn't set the title, I thought I did. Uh, did I just forget to click done? I might have just forgotten to click done. <laughs> But, um, you know, there are a lot of uh, terrible things that have happened in there. For the most part, I feel like we've done a pretty good job with a lot of that. You know, we've had certain people banned, uh, you know, obviously, you know, the drama behind Evo, for example. Uh, we definitely had, you know, a certain individual ousted from there. Um uh, I mean, I know David hates the Olympic governing body, which I totally get. Uh, and, you know, uh, and it just ends up being corrupt. Yeah, there's a lot of that that happens. Uh, I don't know if it was David, but a lot of times governing bodies do end up corrupt. I mean, it's what we see right now with, uh, with uh, uh, CEOs in this country, right? That CEOs just end up with too much power. And I personally, not to get too political, think that CEOs are basically killing this country uh, from being too greedy. But I don't want to get into that. That's just my personal belief. 
but you know, um, you know, that's the thing is it, it does get political. And not only that, but when you talk, when you've heard stories about the smash governing body, uh, that a lot of people did, the title is still down. I could have swore I updated it. When you talk about the people in the smash community, uh, that have actually tried to, um, no, the title is right for me. Uh, so when you actually talk to the people who were in the smash governing body, they started getting death threats. Like there were actual like threats to these people, right? And like I said, this kind of happened with me as well when I started speaking out about certain things. Um, you know, so I don't know if a governing body is the right answer uh, to solve this kind of problem. But then, you know, how do we, how do we stop this toxicity? Because that's what it's about, right? How do we stop this? Well, for the most part, you know, like I said, that guy who made the really, really terrible tweet you know, uh, got really attacked and lambasted and stuff like, and called out, I should say. Um, he was really called out for, you know, what he said in his tweet uh, towards Emily. You know, but the person who kind of started this with their original tweet, you know, I, I, I spoke with them directly through Twitter. And, uh, you know, they were telling me about all the horrible situations that she encountered and all the awful people in Twitch chat, et cetera, et cetera. Again, you're not going to stop people from Twitch chat. And also, you know, uh, look, Twitch definitely is less friendly to certain demographics uh, than others. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, it's going to be a tough situation. And, and the other part is that you know, we always, we always, always hear about, um, we always, hear, oh, you're talking about my uh, in-game thing over here. Yes, you're, my on-stream thing. Yes, 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 yes. There we go. Uh, but, you know, the, the hard part about it is that bad news is like a car crash, right? Everybody rubbernecks when you actually see a car crash and you just can't help it. Everybody is just curious to, to see what happens. And so whenever something like this happens, it, it spreads. In this particular situation, yes. I mean, again, the, one of the terrible things is when this person actually tweeted that, a lot of people were actually assholes to this person. You know, when the person tweeted like, oh, hey, you know, FGC is toxic, you know, in that quote example, a lot of people's responses were very negative and a lot of people were assholes and a lot of people were proving her, proving, you know, proving her point, honestly. And like, it doesn't, it doesn't make it, uh, that's not helping the situation at all. <laughs> that's not helping the situation. You know, I tried to approach it from a very dis a different standpoint. I tried to be more discussion about it. But again, a lot of people were being absolute jerks and I, I don't know how that solves the situation, right? Like it actually <laughs> makes the situation worse, right? And so, you know, again, that's just the internet though. Like, can we even stop that? I don't know if uh, we can actually uh, do that. <laughs> I don't know we can do that, right? I, I don't know if that's actually possible. Um, but at the same time, we can probably uh, do what we can to try to be better about it. We should try to call out more of the bad people that are doing things. You know, like that guy who had the terrible uh, quote retweet to Emily. You know, we should definitely do more to call out people like that. But again... You know, there's just going to be so many multiple sides to a lot of stories and, you know, in certain situations. I know I've been embroiled in conversations with people trying to resolve a situation for someone who for years had just, I mean, we, oh man, a uh, long story on that one. Um, it's, 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 it's a, it's a tough situation, but. But to my point, to my original point, like I said, we need to do something. We probably can try to do better. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure what the answer is. I, I wish I could do better, but I've often, you know, called for 
you know, being kinder and gentler and, you know, and being more harmonious and stuff and met with much cynicism many of the times that I've tried to talk about these kind of things. Uh, but the other thing, too, is that, you know, what I like very indicative of what's going of of the situation here which broke my heart, which absolutely broke my heart, was somebody, and probably a troll, but somebody actually tweeted to me that they said, you know, I said that, you know, uh, I literally said there are so many more examples of the opposite of the FGC being kind and wonderful. Um... And someone actually responded to me, I have yet to see any of those kind and wonderful examples. And that breaks my heart because it just means people aren't seeing it. They're not paying attention. They don't want to see it. Or that good things that happen in our community just make such little noise that people don't see it as anything newsworthy or 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 as something that is as wonderful because you know obviously it's interesting you see somebody in a situation right here where you know they have a bunch of people talk well you have an asshole talking smack to someone who absolutely doesn't deserve it and then you have all these people you know defending and you know fighting back and 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 really calling out that asshole but you know at, at the same time like I said in my response to this person, I basically said that means you aren't trying. You know, the stories that I've heard from people in the fighting game community, there are people who have grown up and felt alone their entire lives because of things like shyness and speech impediments and these kind of things, who joined the fighting game community and have basically found a home they found the first group of people that they get along with and that welcome him. And literally, he's like a hero to many people these days. He found a group of people. He found a home in which that he could thrive and have friends and meet people who he considers to be family. You know, uh, we have had situations where homes have burned down People's equipment have been stolen from their cars. Uh, we've had situations where people have lost loved ones and, and can't afford the you know surgery or the funeral costs. And we've had the community come together and help these people afford these kind of things. You know? And like, I get that this happens in a lot of communities, but just... We can't accept the bad things that happen in other communities if we don't accept the good things that happen in other communities as well, right? I mean, these are wonderful things. We, we've had, um, we've, I've seen so many people have doors opened up for them, for their passion, for their hobbies, for their careers because of the fighting game community. Uh, I, I got a musician to help me with some Evo intros a long time ago. He ended up getting his music on an official Capcom commercial, got accepted to one of the most prestigious music schools in the entire country. And, uh, and he's doing pretty all right for himself right now as a result, you know, uh, you know, I always tell the story of Ringe, who now has the, who's had the opportunity to actually commentate a real NJPW wrestling match. Like, he's actually uh, had that <laughs> happen, right? Um, I, a freaking poor kid from the Dominican Republic has won over half a million dollars and has not only changed his family and his country <laughs> and I mean his friends and, and all this stuff, but literally affected his country. <laughs> the guy has literally 
you know, worked with his country's government on stuff. We had somebody, you know, who was like seconds away from from pulling a trigger to take their own life. And, you know, while, while it was something else that saved their life, thanks to the fighting game community, that person was able to go on and buy a new home for their mom, see their sister get married, you know, thanks to the FGC. We've had people who have lost loved ones who, who still find the passion and the drive and the support from the family within the FGC that, you know, they found. I know people who have literally met people that they love that live across the world through fighting games and they've literally moved to the other side of the planet to be with someone that they never would have met had they not got into fighting games, you know? Um, yeah, I mean, Shay's talked about this in the chat, you know. Um, you know, he's been going through a lot of people and he says the only people who cared and listened was from the fighting game community, including myself. Uh, I don't talk about this publicly a lot, but I, I talk with Shay all the time. I know he's suffering and I know he's going through a lot so I try my best to make sure he's doing all right you know um someone in the blasphemous black in the chat says if you don't mind me reading this out loud with your name I mean you typed it in the chat so I'm assuming it's okay but he says FGC helped me big time uh my with his life when he got rubbed at gun gunpoint they took my keys money and two consoles yeah and and this is the thing these are only the stories we hear about. The amount of personal connections and, and help and growth and just amazing things and opportunities that people have been getting that we don't hear about is there's got to be thousands of stories out there like that. And we just don't get to hear about a lot of these stories because, you know, if someone tweets it, no one quotes retweets it and, 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 and comments on it. You know, oftentimes I definitely try to quote retweet a lot of the wonderful stories that I hear and a lot of the, you know, good things that happen. I try to be, you know, try to spread the positivity around and such. But, you know, it's hard. It doesn't spread. People see it. They like it. They don't retweet it. You know, I mean, honestly, one of the things that might even help the community is quote retweeting the good things that uh happen all the time <laughs> fgc helped me making me realize i suck at games and focus on a proper career oh come on <laughs> come on <laughs> man <laughs> yeah someone in the chat actually says getting back into fighting games at the end of 2022 is one of the reasons i'm still living after the result of the most painful separation of my life I felt completely incompetent, realized all of my worst fears had come to pass and from the person I loved most on earth. And, you know, I again, I, I've heard this in many, I've personally helped other people going through a lot of things uh, with a lot of just absolute depression and stress and horrible stuff. Um, there have been people that I've been talking to for years about these things and you know I um sorry one of the people that I talked to that I that I became very very good friends with and helped through a lot uh passed away recently and it's every time I think about that that is absolutely one of the uh toughest things um for me to accept, um, God. Uh, but yeah, the um, you know, there's so many things going on in the community that a lot of people don't know about. Wonderful things, and I think it sucks that nobody talks about these. Nobody thinks about, you know, uh, how how much good the FGC has done for people. 
and how much a lot of people's lives are better. Now, that's not to say that we haven't had the opposite situation. I've definitely heard situations where the FGC has been so problematic that people have considered taking their own lives because of how bad the, the, the situation has become or how awful the situation is. There's definitely been people chased away from the FGC. I know one person who was, uh, you know, a, a girl who played fighting games who was absolutely just chased out of the FGC because everyone was so toxic to women back in the days. This was during Street Fighter 4 early periods of time where it was really bad, <laughs> where it was really, really bad. And, you know, there was awful, awful things said to her for no reason other than the fact that she was a woman. And, you know, it's, you know, and, you know, they've left the FGC. I know lots of people who have quit the FGC and their lives have literally turned around and, like, everything is so much better now that they've gotten away from that toxicity and stuff. And so those stories absolutely exist. And that kills me. That hurts me. And I wish it, was, it wouldn't happen. Um, you know, the, the, the cynic and the, and the realist in me, you know, says that there's really nothing we can do about that because the world sucks, <laughs> right? <laughs> the world sucks and a um, lot of assholes, there's just a lot of assholes out there and there's very little thing we can do. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, you know, you know, this is one of my main points that Lurker Spine is talking about. You know, the biggest thing with the FGC is honestly just to get the fuck off of Twitter. Not just because of social media or whatever, because the owner, well, yeah, also the owner is an asshole uh, and Twitter is basically unusable at this point. But Twitter is also just not a conducive place for proper discussion and nuance because that's the other thing too when we were back in the days of the srk forums if you yelled into like if you were a cami player like i was and everybody was like i can't freak like cami sucks in street fighter 4 ah! you could yell into the cami forums and cami players would be there like okay let me help you you know, on Twitter these days, you put on Twitter, like, Cammy sucks, I hate her, like, she, I don't know why people rate her high, and then everyone would quote retweet you and make fun of you and say all these mean things and meme you and all this stuff, and it, and it gets really bad. Uh, the forums were great, man. <laughs> the forums were great. I still think for, for, forums are... Uh, uh, are, are honestly the, 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 still the best way to go. Uh, I, again, the forums could obviously be weird, like Gundam Jehudi Kai says. Uh, obviously, it could be very weird, but it was generally more condensed into smaller, smaller circles. Like, if you didn't go into general discussion, you would never see all the shit that was going on in general discussion. You know? Uh, you know, uh... Option says that he feels like collectively the FTC has gotten better over the years. And I do feel like that too. Discord's not the same. Discord is just not the same. Discord is everybody talking at once. Discord is IRC. Uh, it's less of forums because forums were certain channels. They could be modded. You could, you know, like you would have mods of certain topic, you know, channels, topics, groups, etc. And they could be all run kind of like their own little... Discord is just everybody just yelling at the same time. And it's, it's, it's absolutely like for me as a person with ADHD, I, I can't handle, uh, 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 Discord a lot of the time. So, so, you know, uh, it's, Twitter is not a good place to promote discussion, to promote nuance. And the other problem is Twitter is also a place where people can easily talk with talk away from the person that they're addressing. The quote retweet I still think is one of the most vile things on Twitter. Uh, it's useful. I try to always make sure I use it for the right things, but most people use quote retweet for the wrong reason. It's very easy for people with larger followings to sick people onto smaller followings. 
I try to make sure I don't do that. And even when I quote retweeted uh, the the t the particular tweet in question, I was trying to not be as mean about it. I was trying to be more discussion based. Um, yeah, there's threads on Discord, but it just doesn't quite work that way. It's People are too used to using it a certain way right now. Um, yeah, Twitter is just, it's just a bad place. And the thing is, FGC lives on Twitter. Somebody in the chat was talking about, like, in-game chat, right? What's interesting about in-game chat, I think it was you, Necromancy Black. I can't remember if you were saying that you should kill in-game chat or, 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 or promote in-game chat. <laughs> um, interestingly enough, but I think in-game chat actually helps because it keeps you in the game. <laughs> it keeps you away from social media. You know, if people are yelling, like, especially on, like, the, uh, like, in the Battle Hub chat, it actually kind of keeps people away from the social media. And so while the in-game chat becomes a vile cesspool of garbage in a lot of ways, it's a very isolated, vile <laughs> uh, pool of trash, basically. Um, <laughs> so in a weird way, I almost feel like it's kind of better. I almost feel like it's kind of better uh, that in-game chat keeps people off of social media a little bit. The problem is the fighting game community has no outlet. We literally have no outlet out there except Twitter. Twitter's the only place that we can go to to talk and complain and and do all these things, you know? And and I think that's part of the problem. I think that's what makes a lot of people feel like our scene is so toxic is because that's just the majority of the place that it is. You know, that's 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 where everybody goes to vent and complain. And again, negativity, venting, complaining is where people get the most responses from. I tweeted about how I can't beat DIs, that I hate DIs. Like, I tweeted, literally, I, I hate DIs. I can't react to them. And literally said, I don't want them banned because I know it's a me problem. And then everybody just responds to it and talks about it and, like, gives me suggestions, which is great, thankful. But then a lot of people start talking shit, you know, to you about all these things. And it's, like, crazy. Like, that tweet that I put out that I was, like, DIs, I can't be DIs, I hate DIs, got, like, the absolute just, like, gobs of impressions and interactions then i tweeted like if i tweet out like i made it to master with zangief right i did it i did it uh you know and i i i really learned a lot nothing <laughs> nothing people just don't like to spread positivity um it's 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 crazy <laughs> It's uh, people would rather gossip on Twitter instead of retweeting and supporting and sharing dope content. Yeah, and th and that's one of the tough things. And maybe that is one of the things that we can do to be better on FGC Twitter. If we just start retweeting the good news more often, if we just quote retweet things for positivity, that's almost always why I quote retweet things is for positivity. Uh, again, my quote retweet of the recent thing that uh did not go uh, of that of that uh, tweet was an exception of that. Although, like I said, I tried to be positive. Like I retweeted some good news uh, from from uh, Robert Paul from Tempest Rob. I'm sorry. Uh, I retweeted. I quote retweeted a, an a, a, an artwork for humor for jokes. But most of the time, whenever I do quote retweet people, I, I, I it's from a position where I'm trying to be positive, where I'm trying to promote something or, you know, create discussion, you know, or make a joke. A lot of times it's just making jokes, as I can see over here right now. Um, but yeah, like Palm says in the chat, we just need more balance. We need more balance. Uh... And, 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 
you know, and again, yeah, small discords, Harv88, because like I said, that's the same thing. Joe, someone mentioned team games aren't as bad because when something, I mean, team games are pretty bad uh, a lot of the times, but for those people who have a group that they play with all the time, they have someone to vent to. For people playing by themselves and, you know, experiencing it themselves, that's going to be a problem. But, um, you know, small discords, you know, Harv says discord is like the only place I don't see toxicity as far as small discords. And it's because you have a small group of people. You have that outlet. Like I said, I literally had one person to air out all of my frustrations with Street Fighter Duel in. And um, because of that, I never tweeted about it like I did with Teppin. <laughs> My problem with Teppin was that the people that I wanted to vent my frustrations to, some of them didn't agree with me. And so there was always, <laughs> we were always butting heads, unfortunately. So, uh, yeah, all of them are toxic, toxic once the bad apples get in. It's actually true. So, <sighs> Oh, yeah, Street Fighter Duel's global chat is dumb, but, dude, there are people who live there, and you know what? It's it's fine. We don't see any of that, right? So it, it's good. It's fine. Um, uh, well, yeah, exactly. Jumping onto rank, onto rank in a fighter by yourself is less toxic than jumping solo into a team game. Absolutely. Like I said, it's different when you have the group, when you actually have the group to be able to vent to, and they're your friends, and they can talk you off the ledge, etc., etc. But also, the problem, though, is that when you jump into a rank fighter by yourself, after you're done, you run to Twitter to complain about it. Right, You run to Twitter to talk about it a lot of times. A lot of people, that's where they go to complain about some experiences that they've had. Um, that's the problem, is that then it becomes a public forum. And all you need is one person to retweet it to somebody who has a bigger enough of an audience that when they retweet it, someone else who has an even bigger audience sees it and retweets it. And then someone who has an even bigger audience than that sees it and retweets it. And that's all it takes, right? That is the power of Twitter. That was is, is one of the good things about Twitter is getting fascinating things to actually be discovered. Like there was literally one thread where someone heard a song in the background of an X-Files episode and really liked the song and tried to find out where the song was and they could not find the song. And then they found out like the whole internet has been trying to find that song for years. And it just started spreading and spreading. And then the creators of the show actually uh, getting involved. And they were like, people started talking. And the actual people who wrote the music wrote it specifically for that episode. And it's never been publicly released. But they actually managed to find recordings of it. And it got out. <laughs> like, they put it out. Like, that's the great thing about, you know, Twitter and the internet. Sometimes it works. But the problem is, is when a lot of the negativity spreads a lot. So, <laughs> so what I'm saying, James, is that FGC is toxic because everyone is a loser with no friends to talk to. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm not going to deny that. I'm not going to deny that. Uh, no, but seriously, it helps to have an outlet. It, it, it helps to have uh, people talking out there. So uh, is that actually Alex Vi? Is he just real Alex Vi now on on Twitch, not Alex Vi FGC? I thought that's what he was before. Um, but yeah, a lot of it is just a lot of gossip out there. You know, and there is a lot of gossip out there. And I think, I think that's really uh, one of the problems. So... Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. I've modded him a long time ago. It is him. Duh. Okay. Um, then what are we doing, Ultra 10 TV, to provide a positive outlet for those who don't have a tight friend group? I mean, that was a little bit of what the Sure You Can scrimmage was for. That was kind of what the Ultra Chen or the Chenzor Dynasty discords were for. To try to create connections between people, you know, who are in similar situations. But uh, again, I, I don't do a good job of promoting any of that stuff. And I haven't run a show you can scrimmage in forever, despite Investigation Cone, you know, trying to push me to do that. I think he just gave up because I, I was always 
not doing it. Maybe this year I'll try to be better and actually run more. Sure, you can scrimmages and stuff like that. But, um, but you know, that's the other thing too, is I tell people all the time, please come watch my Twitch streams because I will help people on my Twitch streams all the time. I literally had people come on. They're like, I can't do basic combo number five on trials. And I will sit down and go and spend like 30 minutes on a very simple combo to help somebody learn fighting games. I've had people be like, I've never played a fighting game before. How do I play fighting games? I'm like, well, all right. And I stop what I'm doing. And literally for the next hour and a half, I'm talking to this one person who comes back like a few weeks later and they're like, dang, you all your advice helped a lot. I'm like in silver now, you know, like there's just, a, you know, I try my best. I try my best, but I'm one person. And uh, again, I, I don't have a huge audience because positivity doesn't breed views, right? <laughs> I'm not going to change what I do, though. So <laughs> I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. It doesn't breed views, unfortunately. But, you know, like I, I, I'm doing my thing, but I can't do, you know, it's just me. It's just me out there. You know, other guys like Sejam out there who do have more views you know he's helped a lot of people uh red ditto if i'm not mistaken is one of the players that learned fighting games through say jam's discord and now he's like one of the best strive players in the country right now so uh honestly like say jam's uh discord and say jam streams are a great place uh to develop a community find friends and and, and learn and 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 gain a lot of knowledge uh for fighting games so uh, I think I think uh, that's a good place to, to, to go and hang out. Um, if you don't have a large community, go check out the Hoop Squad, the Say Jams Discord. They have a lot of beginner channels in there and a lot of very, very beginner-friendly conversations out there. Uh, one guy I'm not experienced is Call of Duty voice chat. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> uh, a facet of the SEC that I enjoy is the Discord groups and people who host tournaments for older games. There are great discords and people who play KI or even MVCI. Perhaps it's the most recent relevant fighters the most toxicity? No, it's just the bigger groups have the most toxicity. The bigger you are, the more toxicity there's going to be, right? That's just, that's just how it works. Uh, smaller groups are more close-knit. They're more interested in helping people grow. They're hope they're hoping, <laughs> right? KI and MVCI as old games. <laughs> <laughs> oh man but you know small groups like the vampire savior community is going to be super welcoming the soul caliber community was very welcoming to me you know uh, i know different communities are different as well so like i i've heard that the nether realms uh games like the mk communities are particularly bad i hear that from a lot of sources etc so like apparently they're worse than even just the the, the street fighter you know discourse that's out there uh, in terms of that kind of toxicity. But, I mean, again, there's there's drama everywhere. And, and, and it happens because there's a lot of people with pride out there. There's a lot of people who, you know, through misunderstanding or because somebody is just a jerk that, you know, uh, things get taken out of context. And then because someone is more well-known, you know, their side's going to win out, right? More people are going to believe what this person says because they have a bigger audience than another person. And it's not fair. It happens quite often. And yeah, we end up chasing out people from the community as a result that way, you know. Again, I've had people reach out to me with these situations, but again, I can't do much, right? And like I said, I'm in that really weird, awkward position that no matter which way I go, on these kind of things like it's it's a huge risk to me and unfortunately this is my career so i'd like to to to, to try not to you know uh completely destroy myself and i know that makes it tough because then can you trust me am i doing it in interest of my own personal benefit etc cetera, etc cetera. it's a really weird tightrope to walk uh that i'm in let's just be 100% candid here. It is one of the hardest uh, tightropes to walk being in this kind of a position, which is why you see a lot of the more popular, like some of the most popular people, they almost never speak an opinion about a lot of these things. 
<laughs> they almost never say anything because it's 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 honestly just kind of safer. <laughs> oh man. Right, and the arcade, I mean, fatalities in general were a way to rub it in. Like, that whole game was built off the back of you being able to rub in and humiliate your opponent. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Buster Fooley, uh, David became the official lawyer to Tenno Media, who does most of the streams for, like, the Tekken World Tour, for Evo, etc., etc., and so now coming on the stream uh, and talking about games and companies that he directly deals with is now a conflict of interest. So uh, he is, uh, he basically couldn't do the show anymore. So he can't be like, I don't like NRS's decision to do this. And then go talk to NRS and go, hey guys, how's it going? You know, like it just, that just uh, doesn't fly anymore. So uh, yeah, unfortunately it is just me now. <laughs> oh man. Well, yeah. Um, I'm trying, Buster Fooley. I, if you told me that I would have actually been able to survive a whole year doing this on my own, I would have, uh, I would have not believed you. <laughs> I would have sworn that I would have given up already by this point, but somehow I'm still going, and I'm just doing it myself now. So, but yeah, I mean, I, I try to do well. I try to do what's good. People call me out. Because I say that I try to do well. And they're like, oh yeah? Well, you didn't say anything when my situation happened and this happened. And I'm like, I didn't know about that. I'm sorry. I don't hear about everything, right? I just, I don't. Um, but, um, you know, I try my best. But there's, I can't fix anything. <laughs> like, I just can't. I'm one person. And, you know, there's a lot of people out there with opinions about me. That's one of the tough things. It's like every time I say something, because I'm out there in the public all the time, and this is one of the hardest things about being in my position, is that uh, people can get very personal. <laughs> people can get very personal uh, because they know you. They know stuff about you. And so sometimes I'll get into debates with people and they'll be like, the problem with you, James, is blah, blah, blah. And I can't say anything back because I have no idea who they are, right? It's just like, uh, uh I don't know. Uh, but, you know, I can't do much uh, being as the individual that I am. I can try my best. I have a voice. I try to speak up whenever I can, which is why... I spoke up about that tweet because I wanted to defend the fighting game community because I have spent so long trying to make the fighting game community a welcoming place and then to hear somebody lambast it like that, you know, I admitted my response was a very defensive tweet, you know, that it was a reactionary defensive tweet because it's tough for someone like me who tries to, uh, tries my best to promote the FGC as welcoming and uh, it's tough when you see somebody basically do the exact opposite. Now, you know, m perhaps one of the big mistakes really is, is that, you know, I shouldn't sit here and be like, yo, the fighting game community is the most welcoming community ever. You know, maybe that's hyperbole because clearly it's not. <laughs> clearly there's a lot of problems. There's enough bad eggs out there that cause problems. However, the thing about it is, as with any community, you just have to find the right entryway, right? You have to find the right way to get into it. And it really, a lot of times, might even just depend on the first person that you run into. Honestly, a lot of people who find the fighting game community through me, I mean, I, 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 I feel like I've done a good job help welcoming a lot of people and making people feel welcome in the fighting game community. At EVO, at tournaments, when I'm not commentating, I intentionally just wander around with no aim just so people can run into me and not for my ego, not for being like, I want to be recognized. It's because I want people to say hello 
and I want to welcome them and I want to be enthusiastic with them and, and talk with them and, 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 and just, you know, you know, being excited about fighting games with them. It's one of my favorite things is running into strangers and just being like, yo, isn't this shit awesome? And they're like, this is so cool. You know, uh, I, <laughs> when I do OG with Gi, <laughs> you did not feel welcome. That was my way to welcome you to the FGC. Get good. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> but you know, I, I, <laughs> I mean, honestly, like, I, again, if, I mean, seriously, like, if you asked me, I would be super happy to help you in the matches, but then also, too, you know, I, I just, I, I want to make it as welcoming as possible, but again, I'm one person, and there's so many different personalities and attitudes, and I'll tell you this right now, a lot of it just comes from me being old. A lot of it just comes from me being super, super old. Because I've just been through this. I've just seen so much. I've, I'm tired of a lot of things. And I, I was more of an asshole when I was a kid. I literally yelled at someone at Southern Hills Golfland to leave me alone because he was one of those people that always wanted to hang around you guys, even though nobody really knew who he was. But he was like, these, ah! and like, you know, like three of us would want to go to dinner. And he'd be like, cool, where are we going? And we're like, uh, and like, I literally yelled at him and told him to leave us alone and told him nobody liked him. <laughs> like I was an asshole back in the day too, right? Like, I mean, it's just, it is, but like when you get older, you just like understand things differently and you realize, you know, the world is a lot, <laughs> the world is a lot different. You know, the world is not quite how you think, uh, when you're younger, right? And so it's kind of one of the reasons why I I I I I give younger people a pass more often, right? You know, I know a lot of people feel like I'm probably too lenient on people like punk, but God kid is young, man. He's young and has he really had that kind of uh, you know, person to really kind of, you know, talk to him like 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 I, I always say that you know when you go into basketball you get drafted by a team that team has a PR guy who like literally teaches you how to speak publicly and he has to approve of all these things that you do etc cetera, etc cetera. you know like if you join the WWE you can't ever like break personality if you're going by your nickname right like everybody in the WWE has to have a name you cannot use your real name when you are in the when you are wrestling in the WWE and then after that if you ever are representing your character and that name you have to be like like there's just so much out there but the FGC we don't have that kind of thing right we just don't have a, 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 a we don't have people helping other people learn and i think that's one of the one of the one of the hardest things <laughs> come on necromancy black come on <laughs> Uh, and yeah, they want to own the rights to the name for merchandise. It's a multiple level thing, Gundam Judy Kai. For sure, it's a multiple level thing. But you know, it's it's just it's really really it's a very very uh, uh, tough scene that we're in. And let's face it, even though the FGC has been around for thirty years now. We're still in our infancy. We don't know what's going on, dude. We're all just figuring this out. Like, I'm like the one of the oldest people in the community, you know? <laughs> we're, we're the ones making up all the rules and trying to figure this all out and stuff. So, um, so you know, we're still in our infancy. We're still trying to figure this out. But have we made strides, strides, strives, strides? Strides, strides. Yes, I, I believe we have. I feel like we are better than we used to be. Uh, I, I feel like, uh, well, again, Factory Worker 1, keep in mind that MOBAs, FPSs, etc. Are, are in themselves. Riot runs League of Legends. They have control over League of Legends. They can do whatever they want. The FGC does not have that. We, we, we are talking about, 
governing bodies earlier. Remember, we don't have a governing body, so we do not have the ability for one entity to just be like, this is how it is. This is what we do. Uh, yeah, Overwatch League just shut down, exactly. And yeah, it, it can definitely be more corporate, and there are downsides to it, you know. It might seem more organized in one sense, but it might be completely unorganized in other senses. Uh, but there's no such thing, like I said, as the MOBAC, right? There's no uh, FPSC, right? There's no FPSC. Uh, so, you know, it's not like Call of Duty and Halo and, and uh, Valorant and all these other games have to play nice with each other and all exist under one umbrella, you know, at, at, at an EVO kind of thing, you know? Uh, they're just running their own communities and it would just basically be if there was no such thing as an Evo and no such thing as a combo breaker and it was literally just here are these Capcom tournaments, here are these Mortal Kombat tournaments, etc, etc. Um, and so yeah, it's a very different uh, situation. Uh, for MOBAs and FPSs and a lot of the other esports out there. Uh, yeah, a former Dota 2 player was known for his super toxicity and he was only banned when he was caught cheating. Oh, man. <laughs> FTC will never have a game big enough to get to that level. I don't, I don't agree with that necessarily, Buster Fooly. I feel like Street Fighter has that potential. And in Japan right now, Street Fighter VI is gangbusters right now. Uh, they're doing some great things in Japan right now. Uh, but also Japan is definitely more accepting of the kind of things that they're doing and, and such. So it's, it's, a, it's a different environment. I don't know if we could get the same kind of thing in the U.S. just yet. Um, but um, Street Fighter VI kind of showed that we do have that ability. But again, it's a different kind of thing because like <laughs> everyone's complaining. And so like every time people try to come and see where the stuff about the FGC, where do you go? Right. If you're someone like, hey, this FGC is cool. Where do I go to learn about more about the FGC? Where do I go? Blah, blah, blah. Before, like when we used to do interviews on the show. Everybody we interviewed and we asked, how did you get into the FGC? It was always, I did this. Then someone told me about Shoryuken.com. So I joined Shoryuken.com and the rest is history. Nowadays, what do people do? Oh, where do I go learn about the fighting game community? Oh, go to Twitter. Follow these people. And then it's just like, you just see the garbage out there. What's up, Zero Five? And you just, it's just, it's like, ah. Like, where do you go to learn about the fighting game community? You go to Twitter because that's where we live. We don't have one giant FGC Discord, you know, and like, ah, it's, that is the problem with the fighting game community, honestly. Like, that's where the problem is. So everyone who gets into Street Fighter VI, they're like, where do I go? Oh, go on to Twitter. And then all you see everybody like, like, Ken is a scrub character. He carries you. And this beginner's like, but I use Ken. And I'm not winning. What's happening? And then all these, like, it's hard, dude. <laughs> it's hard out there. Uh, there's no good place because, like I said, Shoryuken actually pulled people in. Have people had bad experiences in the newcomer forum? Of course they have. Have they had bad experiences in the individual character forums? Of course they have. But for the most part, most people who went through SRK became big fighting game players. You know, uh, also arcades helped to create a lot of communities back then. I, I can talk until I'm blue in the face about arcades, Squall, but... Problem is, I'm also a little biased because my arcade experience has generally been more positive. Not a lot of other people had cool arcade scenes big enough uh, to promote the kind of things that, you know, definitely made the arcade scenes good. But those arcade scenes that were big and were good, like Chinatown Fair, like Southern Hills Golfland and stuff, like uh, Sunnyvale Golfland, were very good at keeping, sustaining the fighting game community. And, 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 you know, keeping at least a, a certain group of people very interested about it. 
What about the Street Fighter subreddit and official Discord? Again, that's Street Fighter. That's not the fighting game community. That's not a fighting game community. That's just Street Fighter. The beautiful thing about Shoryuken.com was that there was the Street Fighter forums, and there was the Marvel forums, there was the Mortal Kombat forums, there was the Tekken forums, there was etc, etc. Actually, I don't remember if they had the Tekken forums, because I think they just left that in Tekken Zaibatsu. Uh, Tekken Zaibatsu was kind of the 3D brother of uh, Shoryuken.com. But we would always have the forums for multiple games. Yeah, fighting games are a big commitment. A lot of things are a commitment, big commitment though. So, um, uh, how did SRK die? It's just eventually, it just didn't really, forums just became out of date. People didn't use forums anymore. And then the, uh, and then showreacon.com was super expensive to maintain. And then, and then, uh, you know, for reasons or another, you know, eventually, you know, like event hubs became the place to go. So, oh, the Cannon Brothers could afford it. They just, there was no reason to afford it, basically. <laughs> um, what about the fighters subreddit? Uh, I mean, Reddit is tough, right? Because, I mean, like, here's a great example, right? What was the fighting game Reddit channel that that got the biggest was the, the, the most toxic one, right? <laughs> like, that's what happened, right? Like... Literally, the most toxic fighting game subreddit was the one that got the most popular, and they actually became one of the more influential uh, one of the more influential entities in social media. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, the Dust Loop forums used to exist. Yeah, uh huh. Um, but that's just uh, that's just one of the hardest things is that there's no good centralized place to go, and every time somebody has tried to build one, it just hasn't worked because Twitter is where people go, and people like the drama in Twitter, right? Like people just enjoy the drama of Twitter. People like drama; they like hearing about these things. They like discussing these kind of things. So it just uh, it, it, it attracts people a lot. So. Right, so Reddit is a mil a bazillion times more toxic than Twitter or Discord. Maybe not than Twitter. Although I can see your point though. I can see your point, honestly. Um Before centralized social media, people were more willing to volunteer their time to help moderate and maintain spaces for their communities. That doesn't happen anymore. It's a really interesting comment, Church of Jaw, and actually, I, I I do think that that's largely true. Yeah, and like Mike says, there are people out there who do still do that, but you know, there was something about being a moderator, like on the Shuriken forums, like it was just like it was really spe like people just wanted to be moderators, like they, they, it just made them feel special. I just don't know. <laughs> oh man. And again, people would become moderators because they were trusted and they were already good at helping keep the peace in threads and stuff like that. And, you know, being like, you know, this thread is useless, this post is useless, et cetera, et cetera. Like, uh, I, 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 I miss that. I miss the fact that you can see someone being an asshole on the forums and just go tell a moderator and the moderator would just go and delete it. Like, I miss that kind of shit, you know? Um... <sighs> yeah, being mods in people's Twitches are definitely a, uh, you know, a big deal as well. So it's it's definitely nice. But again, you know, that happens because you, the, the, the streamer trusts them, right? And they see them do good things, so. <laughs> but yeah. I'm, I, I want it to be better. Obviously, I want to try to do what I can to make it better. I really wish that, uh, you know, we, we, I can only do so much. And I can tell all of the hundred people in this stream right now, you know, like, hey, you guys should retweet more positive stuff. But like, you know, is that really going to help? <laughs> uh, I, again, 
if I could have an answer to make uh, social FGC social media better, I should literally run for the government, you know, to see if I could actually do stuff there too. Um, I guess the best way to kind of close this whole discussion out is, is the FTC toxic? Yeah, it, it is. It is, right? There's toxicity in there. Is it, is it, is it, you know, at a point where it's worse than everything? Is it the most toxic environment? I mean, that's pro most likely a no, <laughs> especially considering what a lot of people have been telling me in the, in the, in the chat over here. Uh, it, it, you know, but you know, what are the reasons why it feels so bad? It's because Twitter is our one of our main forms of you know uh, discussion, one of our main forms of, you know, one of our main outlets. Like you know, for those people who are in other communities like League of Legends, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, do you go to Twitter? Is Twitter where you go to hear about what all the big League of Legend news or what all the personalities are doing? Is that is that what's happening out there? And then, of course, fighting games, you know, they, 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 they do promote a certain kind of personality. They do promote that kind of, you know, I want to be better, I'm going to beat you down. And sometimes the people who do that are the ones that have to talk other people down to make themselves feel better. And that's going to happen. And unfortunately, yes, does 1v1 competitive video games cause that? Yeah, it does, right? So fighting games, you're going to run into those kind of people. Uh, does it suck? Absolutely. Uh, should they not be doing that? Yeah, of course. Uh, are we ever going to stop that? Probably not. Uh, should you just let it slide off your back and not even take uh, note of it? <laughs> Easier said than done. It's actually very hard, especially as a person who is very sensitive and it's taken me a long time to get to that point. It's very hard to do. So I totally get it that if that happens to you and you want to leave the FTC, more power to you. I mean, I, I'm seriously, like you have every right to want to leave. <laughs> you have every right to want to leave because you know what? This shit isn't for everybody. This This is not fun for a lot of people to, to be in that kind of environment. But again, the main point that, you know, my tweets were uh, talking about is that there are a lot of great things that come out of this scene. There's a lot of good things that come out of the scene. And, you know, if you do run into a bad start, there are ways that, you know, so you can try to pivot and get to a better space within the community. Some people that may never happen. I know some people, like I said, who have left the FGC or have just never been able to, to get to that point where it can be better, unfortunately, uh, and it sucks. And if they leave, I don't blame them. I've had people talk to me and they're like, man, I'm going to leave the community because blah, blah, blah. And I was like, hey, look, this is what I can advise. But if this doesn't help, absolutely get the hell out of here. You know, like there's no reason for you to stay. <laughs> absolutely. So, um you know, that's, that's, uh, this is not necessarily the best place for everybody. Uh, and it's not one of those things that if you can't hack it, you didn't deserve to be here anyway. No, it sucks. Uh, if this, if, if you're not in that competitive brain, but you want to have the enjoyment of fighting games, we're expecting something, you know, without people talking shit and all this stuff like that, you know, and you leave. No, it's not like, ha good riddance, scrub. You couldn't have hacked it anyway. No, it sucks. It sucks to lose anybody who was interested in your hobby and then something takes them out of it. It sucks in every case for that situation unless it's like hey i got married and had a kid <laughs> and then you're like okay you know go do that you know that's great awesome you know but you know if someone leaves because the environment isn't for them that's every much in their right and there's there's and it's unfortunate like we'd rather keep them in of course of course we'd rather keep them in but again uh i i don't think I don't think this is a great way to fix it right now because, like I said, the problems are no centralized place to go except for Twitter. And Twitter is just, uh, 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 Twitter sucks. Twitter is awful. <laughs> it's awful for discussion. It's awful for nuance. It's awful for tone. It's awful for moderation. It's awful for discourse. It's awful for everything <laughs> except for venting <laughs> and yelling into the void. 
and except the void yells back or listens and then repeats it. So it's just that, the, like I said, I, I really feel like the biggest problem for the FTC is that we live on Twitter. Honestly, I really, really feel like that's the biggest issue. And that's one of the things that makes the, uh, the scene feel so toxic is because, like I said, for a lot of other games, you have these global chat or you have all these other like places to go. But um, I uh, <laughs> freaking necromancy black. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I mean, obviously, shit talk and, you know, uh, minor toxicity, keeping it in the game, you know, K-Brad staring down Wolf Crone kind of thing, you know, is part of what makes the FGC what it is. Uh, you know, that's, that's fine, uh, as long as we do keep it in the game. And as long as, you know, it isn't personal, I think, I think that's fine. So, um... Yeah, there's no way to moderate Twitter, 100%. And that's one of the hardest things about it, honestly. <sighs> you know, it's so funny, Necromancy Black. I mean, I guess I'm the right, I follow the right people. I've never had that problem. I've actually never had that problem. <laughs> I, I don't have anybody who does that to my timeline. I've never had to block anybody or mute anybody that way, so... Um, the FGC can have its own federated servers on Mastodon and soon Blue Sky. Yeah, we'll see if the FGC can actually go and live off of, you know, live, live on other social media groups. And then who is going to step up and actually become the people to moderate and run those kind of things? That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a tough one right there. Um. Because who can you trust out there? Who can you trust? And of course, you guys are watching me. A lot of you guys are going to be like, you could do it, James. We trust you. You're, there are so many people out there who wouldn't trust me to run something like that. There are a lot of people out there who would be like, no, James would be biased. Da, 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 da. You know, all this stuff. So, <laughs> Plus, I'm not sure I'd want that job. All right, I'm not sure I want that job. Um, so yeah, it's a it's a tough situation to do. So I, I have a blue sky already. Yes, choose a stoa. I have a blue sky. I have a threads. Uh, I think I have a mastodon. I just reserve those. So yeah. Uh, So yeah, anyways, uh, sorry, I'm just reading the chat right now. So um, anyways, that's all I think I have to say about that topic here. So, uh, you know, <sighs> frustrating, tough way to start the new year, tough way to start the new year. But, um, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's a good way to start it because maybe that'll turn that into something that's a, a focus for me. Uh, and that will be something that I try harder to do. Maybe I'll try harder to, to, to try to make the FGC more welcoming and stuff. But like I said, it's a difficult line to toe uh, when you're a known personality because you anger just the wrong people and your life will be uh, suffering for quite some time, honestly. <laughs> so, <sighs> but maybe I'll try my best. Maybe I'll try to do more. Maybe I'll try to do stuff but again people have to understand if you come up to me and be like this is the situation these people are being horrible i can't just accept that at face value i have to do due diligence and and, and find out more information and sometimes if i can't come to a conclusion i can't do anything i i, I there's literally nothing i can do i'm sorry i'm sorry uh i'm just an individual i don't have any power despite me being in this fighting game community for so long and having my hands in so many different, you know, pies and stuff like that. I, I, I really don't have a lot of power here. <laughs> so, <laughs> like I said, I've had people attack me. 
Uh, I've had people get my Twitter banned. I've had people come after me personally. Uh, there have been some interesting times uh, for for doing what I do here. So, <laughs> oh man. In any case, uh, I think that's all. But uh, again, fun way to start off the new year. Next week, I will definitely be doing the Ultra Chen TV Awards, and we will be talking about all the good stuff. Uh, some bad stuff as well, but we will definitely be talking about a lot of the wonderful things that have happened in uh, the FGC in 2024. It should be uh, it should be should be a fun time, and it should be uh, a lot uh, you know interesting to see the kind of things and reminisce through the fighting game community from the past year. <laughs> How long has Jasmine been sitting there? What the heck? Just sitting there. Um, but in any case, uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Hope you guys had a wonderful Christmas and New Year's and, uh, and or holiday season, as it were, if you don't celebrate, uh, uh, Christmas or you are on the lunar calendar, for example. Uh, I mean, I'll probably talk about the CPT Japan premiere. I'll be commentating it. So tune in for that this, this week. And uh, again, you know, hope everybody sees, you know, just had a great end of the year, hung out with a lot of friends and family. And if um, and uh, if 2023 wasn't your thing, like it wasn't for me, hopefully 2024, you know, is better. 2022 wasn't great. I was hoping 2023 was would be better. 2023 turned out to be worse. So let's hope 2024 actually uh, treats me well, knock on wood. And, uh, you know, I know the more I hope it goes better, the worse it'll probably be. But we'll see what happens. I just hope for a very uneventful 2024. <laughs> That's what I hope for, honestly. So uh, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for hanging out. Thank you guys for continuing supporting the channel. Uh, and... Uh, uh, yeah, uh, the day this podcast graced your ears was the most important day of your life. Uh, but for me, it was Tuesday. <laughs>